Hello and welcome to the Punchline. I'm your comic strip critic, and there's one major category left to analyze for this year's Rubin Awards, the Outstanding Cartoonist of the Year. And it's an interesting year this year, to be certain. Not only are there two cartoonists from both major syndicates here, but we have a third cartoonist who's not a comic strip cartoonist, but a cartoonist for one of America's biggest magazines. Our nominees are Stefan Passis from Universal Euclid, Hilary Price from King Feature Syndicate, and our newcomer, Roz Chast, who is best known for her work with The New Yorker. Pastis and Price, doesn't that sound like a law firm? Pastis and Price were discussed just last episode, so let's go over them first before spending some time on our newcomer. Hilary Price has been drawing Rhymes with Orange since 1995, and has won the Best Newspaper Panel Award three times prior to this. Something I really like about Price is that she works out of an old factory repurposed into a studio for multiple artists. It's nice to see her trying to inspire the creative community and giving opportunities to other cartoonists. For example, while she was overseas for a little while, Susan Camilleri Konar stepped up to run Rhymes with Orange for the week. Price has spent a lot of the last year speaking at various organizations, including a number of schools, and helping to promote Team Cul-de-Sac and the Art of Richard Thompson book. Just a quick reminder, all these sales from the Art of Richard Thompson book go towards helping fund research to end Parkinson's disease. That's really important, so go check it out if you haven't yet. And aside from being an active participant on the speaking circuit, Price has still kept going strong with Rhymes with Orange, which I sometimes think wouldn't look too out of place in a magazine like, oh, The New Yorker. And guess who one of the influences was on the comic's writing style? Hint, it's one of the other nominees, and it's not Stefan Pastis. Speaking of Stefan Pastis, shame on me. I somehow completely spaced out on the fact that Pastis collaborated with another cartoonist for a few Pearls Before Swine comics. Who was his little helper? Some guy by the name of Bill Watterson. I don't know how Pastis managed to pull that off. I mean, he wrote a blog explaining how, but it's still the sort of thing that just kind of boggles my mind. The original artwork from Watterson's three guest strips were auctioned off, with the proceeds going to Team Cul-de-Sac. Aside from helping bring Watterson back to the newspaper comics, though, Passis has kept going strong with the Timmy Failure series of middle school books, having released Timmy Failure, We Meet Again! And he's already working on the next installment, Timmy Failure, Sanitized for Your Protection. Heh, <laughs> Sanitized for Your Protection. That sounds like the state of newspaper comics sometimes. Rita Piccolo actually had a great write-up about that a week or two ago. Go check it out if you haven't yet. Incidentally, I love the comic strip censor character that's a relatively new addition to the Pearls cast. He first appeared late last year, but it's always so much fun to watch Pastis write dialogue that deliberately toes the line of acceptability. Pastis has been nominated for the Rubin Award six times, and that's not counting this year. I'm sure he'd be thrilled if he got his Rubin Award before Leonardo DiCaprio gets his Oscar Award. So those are our two familiar faces in this year's Rubin Awards, Stefan Pastis and Hilary Price. We're all familiar with their work, we've seen them here on the Punchline many times before, and they're both great cartoonists. And that brings us to our third nominee in this competition. Roz Chast is not a comic strip cartoonist. Her cartoons appear in The New Yorker, where she's been working for a very long time. But I admit that The New Yorker is not something I'm very familiar with. It's a little outside my usual territory. Is anybody out there a New Yorker critic? And if you're wondering why someone who isn't a syndicated newspaper cartoonist is nominated, well, remember, the Rubin Award is giving to the Outstanding Cartoonist of the Year. That covers more than just the funny pages. It also covers comic book artists, TV and movie animators, political cartoonists, magazines, even greeting cards. Which brings us to Roz Chast. Chast has had a long career with The New Yorker, having served the magazine since 1978. She's also written and illustrated plenty of other books, including What I Hate, A Friend for Marco, and several others. But the one that's probably going to be focused on the most at the Rubens is her most recent publication, entitled Can't We Talk About Something More Pleasant? 
It's a cross between a graphic novel and a memoir, detailing the story of her being an only child, helping her parents as they reach the end of their lives. It's received pretty much universal acclaim across the board, and has already won the Kirkus Prize for nonfiction. And has she won any other awards during her career? Wow, okay, that would be a solid yes! The most recent one, the Heinz Award, is awarded to, and I quote, <coughs> exceptional Americans for their creativity and determination in finding solutions to critical issues. And it also comes with a $250,000 cash prize. Chast is a serious power player this year. Chast's art style is definitely reminiscent of Rhymes with Orange, or perhaps I should say the other way around. There's a detailed sort of sketchiness to her work that I like. I could also compare her style pretty favorably to that of Cul-de-Sac, and her writing is oddball and simple, but there's also a very heartfelt and honest style to it. After almost 35 years of professional work, it's clear that Chast has refined her art to a science. The combination of The New Yorker and Can't We Talk About Something More Pleasant makes her a heavy contender for the Rubin Award. I think this year, it's going to be a competition between Stefan Pastis and Roz Chast. I personally will be voting for Stefan Passes because after seven nominations, the guy's freaking earned it. It would be great to see him walk away with the big award. But at the same time, Roz Chass work has been so critically acclaimed this year that I think she might be the one to walk away with the Rubin. And I mean no disrespect to Hillary Price at all, but unless I missed some critical information somewhere and I don't think I did, Rhymes with Orange is her only real play this year. Going up against Passis' variety and Chast's critical acclaim, she really feels like the underdog in this lineup. And like I said, I would love to see Stefan Passis win this one. He would be who I would be voting for, but if Passis is a heavyweight boxer, then Chast is the Incredible Hulk. With all the acclaim that she's been getting for Can't We Talk About Something More Pleasant, it just seems like that's gonna be the thing to beat this year and a critically lauded, multiple award-winning, heartfelt graphic novel going up against a middle school novel? It just doesn't seem fair to me. So, while I will be voting for Stefan Passis, I ultimately think that the winner of the 2014 Outstanding Cartoonist of the Year Award is going to be Roz Chast for her work on The New Yorker and Can't We Talk About Something More Pleasant. Just like last time, let me know what you thought of my decision down in the comments below and leave your own thoughts on who you think should win. Now, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss my post Ruben wrap-up video, but until that time comes, I'm your comic strip critic, and I am off to the Ruben Awards. Thank you.